In 2018, Porter Moser, Sister Jean, and Loyola Chicago were the story of March Madness. Going all the way to the Final Four is an 11 seed. The Ramblers had a strong season that year. They won the Missouri Valley regular season championship and conference tournament, but the Cinderella run was certainly not expected. In their conference games during the 2018 season, Loyola scored 1.1 points per possession and allowed 0.95. Both of those were first in the Valley, but this season's version has that Final Four team beat, especially on the defensive end, where the Ramblers are allowing .85 points per possession in conference play and currently have the number one ranked defense in the entire country in Ken Pomeroy's ranking. The Loyola defense forces opponents into very long possessions. They're second in the country in average possession length, sitting right next to the Virginia pack line. They're also ninth in defensive rebounding percentage and 21st in free throw rate. It's a very fundamentally sound style of defense that schematically is really a hybrid of many different schemes. If you subscribe to the channel, you may have seen my videos on no middle, pack line, help only when necessary, and force weak. Loyola's defense uses elements of all of them. It's hard to put them into one specific category. If you ask Porter Moser for the reason for Loyola's defensive success, based off hearing him talk in the past, I can already pretty much guess what would be the first word out of his mouth. Culture. 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 Culture is everything. Culture will hang a lot of banners. We've got to have a culture change. Culture change. We're going to change the culture. Complete change of culture. Build our culture. Build the right culture. Build a great culture. Build a culture. Build a culture here. Set a culture. Set your culture. You have the right culture. Anything is possible. Create culture. Create a culture that would produce results. Produce results. To create a culture, create a culture that produced results. Create this culture, build the culture, culture, the culture. Culture. Everybody uses the word. Loyola's wall of the C word has become well known since that final four run. And it's mostly just a list of their offensive and defensive schemes and coaching points. For an example, let's look at switch up which is a saying for how to aggressively switch onto the ball, switching up towards the ball handler instead of being passive. Just above switch up is talk it, touch it, switch it, deny it. Which are Moser's teaching points for switching off the ball. Here you can see Loyola stays the aggressor by switching right into a denial, getting in the passing lane. Of course, the talk it part of the phrase means to be loud and communicate on defense, which is referenced several times on the wall. Listen to how Cam Crutwig gives a verbal on the switch here. Has created this, but it is one of the most talked about mustaches in college basketball. Yes. No, I, I do not. In this video, we'll look at more of the teaching points on that culture wall. We'll see how Loyola's scheme allows them to be so successful defensively, even without a true rim protector. Some of the key players in Loyola's defense, how Wisconsin and Richmond beat them earlier in the season, and a different stat that Loyola ranks number one in the country in. Please like, subscribe, and comment on what team or scheme you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching. Cameron Crutwig, as you might remember, was a freshman starter on the Final Four team. He had 17 points in the Final Four against Michigan. Now as a senior, he's one of the best players in the country, leading Loyola in usage rate and assist rate while being the initiator in five-out offense. Even at 6'9", 255, Crutwig's passing and ball skills allows Loyola to run their offense through him in different spots on the court. Crutwig does have some physical limitations defensively. First of all, he's definitely not a leaper and doesn't protect the rim at the level you'd expect for a center of the number one defense in the country. He is the conductor of the defense though. Especially with no crowd noise this season, you can usually hear him giving a verbal and yelling out instructions. Here he calls ice out early, which tells his teammate to force the ball to the baseline. And one defensive trait Crutwig does have is quick hands. He uses them to get a piece of the ball when going in and out of ball screen coverage. So it's those hands and his brain that helps make up for some of the lack of athleticism. Here Bradley's running their slice screen the screener set and Crutwig is two steps ahead of the play, dropping below the slice action before the ball is even reversed to the other side. 
Because of his lack of agility, Crutwig can afford to not be two steps ahead. On this one, the battle in the post makes him late on the ball screen. It's no secret that ball screen defense can be an issue for Crutwig. With Drake holding for the last shot of the half, notice how Loyola is hiding Crutwig. He's guarding a perimeter player instead of a big because Tate Hall is the more switchable defender in ball screens. Compare Ahir Uguayak's hedge and recovery here to Krutwig's. It's just a different level of speed and recovery. As a result, Loyola usually doesn't hard hedge with Krutwig. Instead, they'll keep him flat to contain the ball handler. Evansville is a team with great three-point shooting and spacing, and they stretch the Ramblers out on the perimeter, forcing a stunt and a scramble on the weak side. Loyola is very good in scramble situations, but Evansville did take advantage of the extended defense a few times with cuts to the basket. To avoid that, Loyola has gone to drop coverage in games against some of their best opponents. Keeping Crutwig closer to the hoop on ball screens, putting less pressure on him to guard in space, and on his teammates to have to help and scramble. But I will say, if I'm an opposing coach against Loyola and the NCAA attorney with good guards, I'm putting Crutwig in ball screens early and often. The best defender on Loyola, Lucas Williamson, is another senior who played a big role off the bench on that Final Four team. Williamson is the total package as an on-ball defender. He's long, he's athletic, he has quick hands, and the ability to play very aggressive on the ball while not getting beat to the basket. Williamson is especially good at blowing up ball screens, riding the ball handler, and just not getting screened in the first place. As you would expect, he usually guards the other team's best player. Uguayak is another elite defender. With the size to be at two places at once in ball screens and to guard all five positions in one-on-one -on -one situations. At the top right of that culture wall is one of Loyola's most important defensive principles. We have a thing, never come off corner shooter. It is pretty common for teams to stay at home on the strong side corner. That doesn't necessarily make them unique, but Loyola is especially conservative with the player in the weak side corner. You'll see that low weak side defender sometimes turn the other way during baseline drives to take away the drift. And that's much less common in the college game, where low defenders often aggressively meet the driver on baseline drives outside the paint. Here's the perfect clip showing their priorities. Krutwig is in a long closeout on the perimeter. You might think that Loyola would want to help their big guy out, but all four defenders are moving the other way as the ball gets into the paint. That leads us to another important Porter Moser philosophy, defending without fouling. The wall is filled with different sayings and techniques to avoid fouls, like reach for the lights, which basically means to stay vertical. A reach for the lights. And it all leads to one main goal tough twos. When guarding the drive, you'll see Loyola defenders reach for the lights, with arms straight up to avoid cheap fouls and make the driver finish at the rim. Same thing for off-ball help defenders. They get vertical and jump straight up and down. By focusing on not overhelping and not fouling, opponent possessions have a tendency to look like these ones. Drives into the paint where offensive players are either forced to go back to the basket or pivot around looking for a way out. It's a great job of containing the ball.
On top of all of that, Loyola goes under a lot of ball screens, sometimes daring the ball handler to take a jump shot instead of risking giving up a drive to the paint. And that's especially if it's a poor shooter using the ball screen. The Ramblers' coverages can change game to game based on the scouting report of the opposing players. It all leads to those tough twos that are written right on the wall. This season, over 26% of jump shots taken by Loyola opponents have been off the dribble, number one in the entire country. The NCAA average on that stat is about 18%. That's what the scheme forces you into, tough mid-range jumpers and tough finishes at the rim. By defending the ball without fouling, only helping when necessary, and going under screens, Loyola has built a defense that makes you hit tough twos. So one of the keys when playing against Loyola is to not just expect the help. Go finish at the rim. The quicker guards from Wisconsin and Richmond had some success doing just that, blowing by Loyola defenders that are normally so good at keeping the ball in front. Clearly the scheme works in the Missouri Valley, but I think it's at least reasonable to be concerned with how the scheme translates to higher level, more athletic competition. Then again, I probably would have said the same exact thing back in 2018, right before they made the run to the Final Four. And to be fair, Loyola does make adjustments. Against Wisconsin's post-ups, they sent extra help by digging from one pass away, with the defender putting his back to the sideline to dig in the post while also seeing the rest of the court. One game later, it was Richmond's turn to make the adjustment. They were prepared for those digs by sinking to the corner, out of the defender's line of vision. So while Loyola clearly has their core principles, I mean, there's a wall with all of them written down, it'll still be a chess match of adjustments in March Madness. In our upcoming newsletter, I wrote even more about Loyola's scheme and how it compares to the no middle and the pack line. Personally, I think they're a very, very good defense, but do have some skepticism that they're really number one. So the link to all my thoughts on that is in the description. Please hit that subscribe button if you're not already, and see you in the next one.